Join me today as I take into a look into the world of silicon carbide Schottky diodes and find out how they work, why they're so good, and everything you need to know in just a few minutes. Yes, these diodes cost a bit more than their straight silicon counterparts, but stay with me and find out why there's such a buzz about them. Are they worth it, or is it just hype without any reason? In reality, the performance is much better, and this normally results in significant cost savings for the overall circuit. This is because the great performance can shrink the size and complexity of the overall circuit, lowering costs whilst boosting efficiency and reliability. It's in fact a total win. Overall lower cost and better performance. To explain more, normal silicon Schottky diodes are really great. They have a much lower forward voltage drop than standard PN junction diodes, and also they have a virtually non-existent recovery time, making them great for things like RF circuits and switching power supplies. But there are some big drawbacks to the normal silicon Schottky diodes. The first is that they have a limited reverse voltage. 100 volts is probably the maximum you'll be able to get, or maybe just a bit over, and many of them are much less than this. Secondly, they suffer from terrible reverse leakage. Dependent upon the diode, it could be about 5 milliamps at room temperatures. But if the temperature goes up, so the reverse current shoots up with it, and this may not be acceptable for all circuits. To solve these problems, enter the silicon carbide Schottky diode. These diodes have much higher reverse voltages, sometimes a kilovolt or more, dependent upon the device. And the reverse leakage current, forget the milliamperes, we're talking possibly tens of microamperes at room temperature. And even at higher temperatures, they're very much better than the straight silicon Schottkys. And another advantage, the top junction temperatures are much higher, sometimes up to a sizzling 175 degrees centigrade. So what makes silicon carbide so special? Well, yes, as the name indicates, it's a compound made from silicon and carbon. It's legendary for being incredibly hard and temperature resistant. And what does it look like? Here's some silicon carbide used as a lapping powder. It looks grey and boring. It's also used in sandpaper and other areas where hard and temperature resistant materials are required. But why is it used in electronics? Well, it shines because it's what's called a wide band gap material. Silicon, standard silicon, has a band gap of 1.1 electron volts, and silicon carbide smashes this with a figure of 3.3 electron volts. But yes, what do these figures mean in practice? Electron volts probably don't mean much to you or me anyway but the wide band gap enhances properties and provides a huge increase in the breakdown voltage. Compare 0.3 megavolts per centimetre for standard silicon against a whopping 2.8 megavolts for silicon carbide. And this means that the operating voltages for silicon carbide devices are very much higher. Silicon carbide also boasts excellent thermal conductivity and lightning fast switching speeds and these properties together mean that, uh, first of all, much higher temperatures can be tolerated, but also there's less power dissipated during the switching, and this results in less loss and a much greater power handling capability for the devices. In terms of the components themselves, there are many different types, both leaded and also surface mount. And these electronic components are finding a lot of use in power applications. They're almost the go-to for many modern designs. They're used in everything from switching power supplies to electric vehicles, fast charging stations to solar PV inverters and energy storage systems and many more. So they're incredibly useful. So if you found this video about silicon carbide Schottky diodes useful and you'd like to watch more, here's another great video from my channel. Thank <music> you.